All right, today I'm starting this video at Merriam-Webster's website. We're going to define this word right here, absurd. Look what it says. Ridiculously unreasonable, unsound, or incongruous. Right here. Extremely silly or ridiculous. This is what we're seeing in these end times. And I'm going to further expound on this right here. Here is the lying false prophet, Timothy Dixon, who is a confirmed false prophet. It's not up for debate. He is a false prophet. He's got a new video out. We're going to listen to some of the things that he says. We're going to comment as we go. Let's do this. Shall spring forth out of the noonday and shall shine upon those that I have laid my hands upon. And I'll chasten, I'll chastise those that has been against my men and my women, the prophets and the apostles and teachers and the pastors, the people that I have ordained for this time. So right now, uh, what Timothy's doing is he's using God as a weapon. He's trying to scare, I guess, people like me for coming against uh, false prophets, as though that would work. For anybody that serves Jesus Christ in truth and sober-mindedness, we know we stand in the truth of Jesus, and we don't give in to the absurd, which is what Timothy Dixon is. But nevertheless, he has to try, because he's feeling the heat, for his actual false prophecies. But let's continue. I've said to touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. But Doesn't that get old? My goodness. Quoting from Psalms all the time. And I get this comment a couple of times a day. Oh, Drew, I wouldn't want to be you. Touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. They, they can't seem to understand this guy is not a prophet. And besides, you're, you're absolutely taking that verse out of context. But these are grown men and grown women. They should be able to defend their alleged prophecies. You know, God, you can't go run behind God when you're hurling rocks at people in the form of false prophecies and then say, well, God's going to deal with you. I don't have to do. No, you have to defend your position. Even Paul stated this when contending with others having to do with the gospel. The thing that you never see is they never come out and address their false prophecies. They just say things like, you know, touch not mine anointed and do, do my prophets no harm. It's ridiculous. They can't coherently defend themselves like adults. It's crazy. So they just resort to this and again, butchering scripture. But yet you've insisted to mock and make fun of those that stand in this day. But you'll know now that my hands is upon them that I've chosen. For the God's hand is not upon a false prophet. It's a great performance though, right? I... <laughs> It's just ridiculous. Hours, for their words shall come to pass speedily, saith the Lord of hosts. So he says, uh, he says God's speaking through him, but talking about him and others, that these things are going to begin to come to pass speedily. I want you to remember that. And know that I, the Lord, shall again, I'll rain rocks. I'll rain rocks out of heaven upon Italy. I'll rain rocks out of heaven upon Italy. Can somebody write this down? This is a prophecy he's giving. Very important. Saith the Lord of hosts, I see your sin. I see your sin. <laughs> it's, there's such acting here. I wonder what the driver's thinking. He's probably rolling his eyes like, oh. Tim, you're overdoing it here. That that was a little over the top. But the world has covered up, covered up your atrocity, covered up the things that you have done. But I have seen the evil that you lie inside the shadows and you try to deceive the world and think no one sees your sin. But I am the Lord God that sees all things. And I'll even bring it to pass in the next few days. That I Whoa, did you hear that? 
in the next few days. Note the date here. What's a few days? Two, three, four. It's got a bag. I wouldn't say more than four. Now rain rocks out of heaven. Hail shall rain down, even says the Lord. Even in five and ten pound balls, says the Lord. Five or ten pound balls in the next couple of days upon Italy. This is what I heard now. Am I wrong? I heard this, right? Of heaven, even in such a such a great shake, such a great shaking of the land. How many of his alleged prophecy have that term shaking? Rattling and shaking, shaking and rattling. And such a great shaking of the whole continent. So now we know that Italy is on the continent of Europe. There's going to be a great shaking in Europe. This is what he said, not me. Don't get mad at me. Next couple of days. Upon every mountain I've said and I've spoke, even at this day, I shall surely bring to pass, I shall bring it once again to who I have chosen in the hour. For many have said that they have missed it, that the ministers have missed it, and they preach, preach out of their heart and prophesy out of their heart. It's true. See, he's been listening. Right in those little ears there. He's been listening. He's feeling the pressure, and now he's using a tactic thinking he can scare everybody else. But know that I, the Lord, sees you that lies. I see your false dreams. I feel your prophecies that you say that I have spoke. Thus saith the Lord, but I have not spoke through you. But your greedy heart has come out to try to lurk and make money off the innocent. But No, he kind of, he kind of goes off on a tangent. I'm not sure who he's talking about here. It would almost be hysterical if, if he didn't realize he was even talking about himself because he is making a ton of money off this. He's got all his clothes back here while he travels from tent to tent doing his, his uh, what do you call it, um, I don't know, tent revival type things. But uh, I'm not sure really who he's speaking about here other than himself. Know that I, the Lord, shall bring you to a shame. For I shall reveal even that that you're doing in this hour. I'll bring it to an open shame. For the Spirit of God shall rain down upon the real. And they'll shine forth like a light. Because the signs and wonders and miracles shall follow them, saith the Lord of hosts. Even as I send my servant to Missouri, even in this meeting. He's talking about himself again. Can you imagine? <laughs> I'm sorry. He's sending his servant. So he's, it's so, I think it's pretty neat that, you know, God, he harnesses God to speak through him. And then God starts, you know, lavishing uh, praises upon himself and saying, you know, I'm sending my servant to Missouri and so on and so forth. I don't know. It's just kind of funny. Know that I, the Lord, I see even the trouble that lies ahead. I, the Lord, sees that, that though even them that devises mischief against him. I see you, saith the Lord, and I'll stop you, saith God, in your tracks, because I am the Almighty God, and there's nothing that I cannot see. And if you, it's better than a millstone. I wonder if he doesn't realize God see. He's right about that, actually. Obviously, God sees everything. You think uh, you, as the reasonable listener, you think God sees his false prophecies? And the answer is yes. But because his soul, or I should say uh, his conscience, is seared with a hot iron, it doesn't affect him. He just keeps on doing what he's doing. He thinks he's actually serving God. But he's lying in the name of Jesus Christ and shipwrecking the faith of thousands. Be tied about your neck and you be drowned in the sea than to touch this one, to touch the anointed that I... To touch this one. See what, see what he's doing here? I, I, I'll, I'll take that. 
here we go with my words I'm touching you Timothy I'm calling you a false prophet and an actor and an absolute liar lying in the name of Jesus Christ using the name of Jesus Christ to lie so should I be afraid of God for being biblical and calling you out as a false prophet no I'm, I'm actually not not in the slightest I fear God according to his holy word but for me to relent is to let a wolf continue to deceive and destroy the faith of thousands I can't do that I have to at least be a voice of opposition you're an actor putting on a performance in a car it is, even as we saw in the beginning, absurd, ridiculous. You're ridiculous and nowhere near the living God. I'm sending up to this place to Mountain Grove because I, the Lord, sends revival to the ones that's crying. I'll send healing, saith the Lord of hosts. I'll send revival to the land. Can you get a scripture for that? Is there anywhere that talks about the end times where there's going to be a revival? The answer is no. So, again, just confirming he's speaking vain imaginations out of his own heart. You know, there is nothing new under the sun. If you go to the book of Ezekiel, by the way, if you've listened to nothing else in this video, listen to what I'm about to read you now in the Holy Word, because there is nothing new under the sun. This has happened before in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 13. Look what it says. Read with me. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy, and say thou unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the deserts. That's not a good thing. Ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. They have seen vanity and lying divination, saying, The Lord saith, and the Lord hath not sent them. And they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. These are the brain-dead followers who refuse to abide in the truth. Have they, I'm sorry, had ye not seen a vain vision? And have ye not spoken a lying divination, whereas ye say, The Lord saith that, albeit I have not spoken. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because you have spoken vanity and seen lies, therefore, behold, I am against you. What an absolutely terrifying position to be in right there, saith the Lord God. And mine hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and that divine lies. They shall not be in the assembly of my people, neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel, neither shall they enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord God. Because, even because they have seduced my people. And see, this is what false prophecy does. It seduces people. In this case, they were saying peace, and there was no peace. And one built up a wall, and lo, others daubed it with untempered mortar. Say unto them, which daub it with untempered mortar, that it shall fall. So now Ezekiel is bringing the true prophecy, and it's coming against the false prophets and the people, because they chose to listen to liars rather than the truth of God. You can read this. Go read this yourself. Nothing new, just a different uh, generation. And now you've got... Clowns like this, let me scoop, put that back down there, uh, who continue to get on and utter their false prophecies time and time again because nobody in his camp holds them accountable. They absolutely, this 31,000 people love it for vast, overwhelming uh, thumbs up to thumbs down. And of course, Timothy Dixon. You can mail him a check there. 73,000 subscribers. So he's rising and rising. They don't care whether he's wrong or right. They're, he's entertaining them. But let's, uh, let's pay attention in the next couple of days to see if 5 to 10 pound rocks rain down upon Italy. How long do we give them here? I'd say, you know, 4 or 5 days maybe. That's a couple of days, right? 
couple actually means two, but we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. What's going to happen when this doesn't happen? Will you continue to follow him? And if so, for what reason? He is falsely prophesied. Unbelievable. So again, coming back to our definition, read it again, ridiculously unreasonable, unsound, incongruous, extremely silly, or ridiculous. I can't see anything more on this video, so for those that love Jesus Christ in truth and sober-mindedness, read your Bible. Seek God through his living word and reject the false prophets.